Hi, welcome to this tutorial on solving quadratic equations by the use of factorising. Now I've got five questions here, all completely different. They're going to show you different ideas and I would strongly recommend that you look at each one of these methods. You might even just want to do this as part of your revision, say, so just pause the video if you feel confident to have a go and come back and check your answers. However, if you're new to this, let's take you through this. Well, first of all, what you've got to be aware of is that if you have two or more things multiplied together, let's just illustrate them by a couple of question marks here. These things are often called factors. If I've got, say, two factors and it equals zero, what could each one of these be? Well, they could either be a zero each or both of them could be a zero. Like, for instance, if you had naught times three, what's that going to come to? Clearly naught. doesn't matter if you had three times naught, it would still be naught. So one of them would have to be a zero. They both could be zero actually, naught times naught would equal naught. And it's not restricted just to two factors, it could be three factors. I mean, you might get, say, naught times seven, say, times naught. One or more of those can be a naught, and what do you get? Naught, okay, as your final answer. And you've got to be very careful here. I often see this mistake made where you get something times something, say, equals 6. What could these be? One of them's a 6. Not at all. It doesn't have to be a 6. It could be 12 times a half. That would make 6. OK? So, when you get situations like this, don't go around making each one of these values equal the number on the end. You can only do this if it equals zero. So what I'm saying is that if you have one or more factors, let's just write that in, okay, one or more factors must equal zero if you're multiplying them together and they equal zero. Okay, well, let's get on with this first example. What we've got here is x squared equals 3x. Now, in order to use this principle, what I need to do is take away 3x from both sides. Make this equal 0. Don't fall into the trap of dividing through by x, say, to both sides and ending up with just x equals 3. That would be totally wrong. Make sure you take the 3x from both sides. So if we do that, we would therefore have x squared minus 3x equals 0. Now I've got two terms and we can factorise them. I'm assuming that you're familiar with factorising by the way. If not, just go on to my website and look under factorising quadratics. Now x would be a common factor and so we'd be just left with x minus 3 in there and equals 0. So what I've got here is the two factors. I've got x as 1 and I'm multiplying it by this other factor x minus 3. So if I have two or more factors being multiplied together to equal 0, one or more will equal 0. So in this case it can be that therefore this factor x equals 0 or the second factor x minus 3 equals 0. And what does this lead to? Well, I'll just put this one back down again as x equals 0. But if I add 3 to both sides here, I get x equals 3. All right? So two solutions, x equals 0, x equals 3. You can see it works if you put 0 in, 0 squared is 0, and 3 times 0 is 0, 0 equals 0. And when you put 3 in, you get 3 threes are 9, equals 3 times 3, which equals 9. OK, let's try another one. Number 2 here. 
it already equals zero so I don't have to do anything all I need to do now is just factorize this and in the usual way look for a common factor there's a common factor here of 5x so pull this outside your bracket and you've got 2x in here plus 1 and that equals 0. Now I picked this example because what we've got here is three factors. We've got the 5 being multiplied by the x being multiplied by the 2x plus 1. So that means one or more of these factors must equal 0. Well it can't be the 5. 5 doesn't equal 0 so it must mean that this factor x equals 0 or the other factor 2x plus 1 equals 0. Now when you've got this 2x plus 1 equals 0 what we've got to do to get to x is to subtract 1 from both sides that would leave us with therefore 2x equals minus 1 and then we can divide both sides by 2 to leave us with x equals minus a half. Okay. Let's just bring that x equals 0 back down again down here so we can finish with our two answers down there. Okay. Now what about number 3? I picked number three just purely because I find that a lot of students have a lot of problems when they've got a number in front of the x squared here. And you've got three terms, a trinomial. How do we factorize these? Well, as I say, if you're having problems with this, just go on my site and look under factorizing quadratics or trinomials. OK, well, assuming that you've been able to factorize that, what you should find you get is 2x minus 3 and x plus 1. And that equals 0. So here we have two factors multiplied together equals 0. You can see then that it will either be that 2x minus 3 equals 0 or x plus 1 equals 0. And with practice, you should be able to go straight to what x is. If you add 3 to both sides here, you get 2x equals 3. And then if you divide both sides then by 2, you end up with x equals 3 over 2, or 1 and a half. And for this one, just subtract 1 from both sides, and you get x equals minus 1. For number 4, I picked this one because it's not equal to zero. We need to rearrange it. And if we rearrange it by taking 4 and 3x from both sides, we would have x squared minus 3x minus 4 equals zero. And notice how we place the values. Okay, We have our x squared term, then the x term, and then the constant on the end. And that will equal zero. And in the usual way, just factorize this, and what you get is x minus 4 and x plus 1. And that equals 0. And then you can say that either x minus 4 equals 0, or the other factor x plus 1 equals 0. And if you add 4 to both sides, you get x equals 4. And if you subtract 1 from both sides, you'll get x equals minus 1. And for this last one, it's very tempting to go x squared equals 9. And you can do that if you know what you're doing. Okay, x squared equals 9. Take the square root of 9. What do you get? Well, you quite often get people writing just simply 3. But don't forget, it is plus or minus 3 if you go down that route. x squared equals 9. x equals square root of 9 plus or minus 3. But what you could do is factorize this. Now this is the difference of two squares. So I'm assuming you're familiar with that and that would be x plus 3 multiplied by x minus 3 and that would equal 0. Then either factor would equal 0 so you've got x plus 3 equals 0 or x minus 3 equals 0. 
Then if you subtract 3 from both sides, you get x equals minus 3. And on this one, if you add 3 to both sides, you get x equals 3. So, I hope that's given you some idea of how we can go about solving quadratic equations by factorising then. And uh, that brings us to the end of this tutorial.